as you see by the crest with the motto committed to excellence on it, that is our motto here at the Detroit Arsenal and within ta the Tank Automotive and Armaments Command, Life Cycle Management Command, throughout our force, not just here at the Detroit Arsenal, but throughout the United States. And by the way, we also have individuals that are out on the front with the soldiers that are our logistics assistance representatives that are right there with the soldiers that bring back the information and bring back uh, the requirements to us. And we also make sure that they're bringing out the latest in the technology and training to the force. S uh, to be specific, what we do here is this is the headquarters for that effort. And right here at the Detroit Arsenal that we just celebrated our 70th anniversary in existence. We started, of course, as the, the tank plant here in Detroit around Mound Avenue in Warren, Michigan. And the folks here, 8,700 strong, are patriotic, passionate about what they do in coordinating the efforts in our support to the United States Army and also other forces as well, to include the Marines throughout the world. So we're very proud of what we do here, and so are the folks that are here. Of the 8,700 uh, personnel here, 200 are soldiers and Marines, and the remainder are the great civilians uh, that live and work here in, in Michigan. First of all, we're, we're proud to be here, of course, in Macomb County, Warren, Michigan, and our impact in the region is huge. Our, our salary alone, for the payroll alone, is $750 million. So when you think of the impact that has on the community, that's large. Plus, there are other things that go on to our partnerships with, with industry, some located here, some located in other areas, is very strong as well. So our, our partnership with the private industry, uh, may they be, be big business or small businesses, is very important, and that impact is large as well. We need to have a frank discussion about the future because, a, as everyone sees, um, there are many challenges in the, in the future, not just for uh, the Army, but for America as well when it comes to fiscal responsibilities and our abilities. And as we see, first, of course, the, the war and the fight in Iraq drew down, and now we're looking at Afghanistan drawing down. We're looking at the future where, of course, we see a, a decline in funding to the military. But what we're trying to do here is be smart about it, make sure we're being good stewards for our nation and for our Army, and looking at the future. You know, we've grown in size here a little bit within the last five years. And we want to make sure, first of all, we're doing our very best for our nation, for our Army, and supporting the fight and supporting what we're required to do. And at the same time, taking care of our workforce and looking how, if any adjustments have to be made in the future, we do that smartly. This fiscal year, for the fiscal year 13, which started on the 1st of October, we're in good shape. But we've got to make sure we're planning for the future and doing what's right. Right now, I think we're on the right track. Knowing what we do know at this time, um, you know, it, it, there's still a lot of work to be done and still a lot of information that has to come our way, but we're doing contingency planning and making sure, of course, we're taking care of our people right here. And of course, again, we're very proud to be with the Detroit Public Television in honoring our, our veterans on this upcoming Veterans Day. Uh, veterans have a special place in my heart, as you can imagine, after 33 and a half years in the Army, uh, I am one, and, and my brothers and sisters that are out there still on active duty serving in harm's way are those that have come out of the force, either retired or have gone on to do something else. Um, they're very important in our lives. We here, of course, at the Detroit Arsenal are very passionate uh, based on our mission and based on what we see and what we do. For example, we partake in veterans uh, organization events. Uh, we, we have briefings on employment opportunities. Just this last June, we had over 230 volunteers that were involved with a national level convention or conference that was held here at, at the Cobo Center, uh, sponsored by the, the Veterans Administration, where and these numbers are, are very impressive. Over 8,000 veterans uh, attended. Of those veterans, over 5,000 uh, went through job interviews, over 1,300 received job offers, 3,500 were signed up uh, for medical care, and a little over 2,000 were enrolled into the system. That was a huge effort. That was my first experience here in the Detroit area to see, first of all, what this region does, which is impressive, and how uh, this area takes care of our soldiers and looks at the veterans and those who have served 
And then the folks right here from the Detroit Arsenal in volunteering, we had a booth there and you know, making sure uh, you know, we, we gave all the information we possibly can about opportunities within our organization. So very impressive. And one last piece, you know, when you drive by uh, perhaps a, a, a DAV, a Disabled uh, American Veterans uh, Post or a American Legion or sometimes within the cities, and you may see a monument that has a tank uh, or an artillery piece or a piece of equipment, we're responsible for all that. We account for all that. We loan that to these organizations throughout our entire country for, for them to use to honor our, our military and our veterans. In, in terms of veterans and those who have served, again, I've, I've had the honor of leading troops in combat, first as a brigade commander, as a colonel in uh, 2003, uh, where my, my unit was about 4,500 soldiers. Over half were either from the reserve component or National Guard alongside with the active duty. My second deployment was during the surge in the year 2006 in through 2007. Again, only 45% of my formation of 21,000 soldiers were from the active duty forces. The rest were from the reserve and from the National Guard. So when you think of Michigan and you think of um, support to soldiers, I know there are soldiers within Michigan that have belonged to the reserves, that belong to the National Guard and have served, continue to serve, or have, or have come out of the force and are now veterans. And we need to make sure we're taking care of these folks who have served during over 10 years now of, of conflict and what they've done in supporting our country and protecting our freedom. We owe it to them. We owe it to these great men and women who have stepped up. Now, something to consider with all of this, these are all volunteers. You know, there's, uh, of course, the greatest generation that has been identified was the generation during World War II and what they did for our world. And truly, they deserve all of that. Uh, we look at this generation now and some consider it the next greatest generation. And, and thinking about it, they're all volunteers. And I've spoken to many soldiers in many formations uh, during different ceremonies. And I've asked many times, how many of you have deployed once? How many of you have deployed twice, three, four, five, six times? And you know, when a soldier is coming into our army, the chances of deploying are great. But you know what? They keep on coming. They keep on coming into this great force, to this great army. And frankly, that's what's keeping me around. I'm humbled to be part of their formation. Tom, our nation, and particularly this area in Michigan, recognizes, I do believe, the sacrifices that our military has made, particularly within the last 10 plus years in the fights that our folks have been involved with. Something to realize, they're not just the act of duty that you see on, on television. Everybody who's uh, sacrificing right now and performing their duty all look the same. You can't tell the difference between the active duty, the reserve, or the National Guard because they're all performing at the same level. But when you break it down to home, these are fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, your neighbors on the street that if they're in the reserves or in the National Guard, they have gone and done their service and have come home and integrated back in, into our world, into the civilian society. We need to thank them. We need to thank them and go out of our way to shake their hand. You know a, a veteran, particularly during this time, thank them and be sensitive uh, if you will, to everything that they've gone through. This has been a tough fight. Some of these folks have uh, long-term uh, issues that, that are being taken care of. You know, the capabilities we've uh, de developed now in healthcare and the focus on taking care of our veterans and their needs right now is better than ever in, in history. And we have to continue to support them. So what I could say is this, hire a veteran. Say thank you to a veteran. See if a veteran needs some help. Volunteer in organizations that help support our veterans. Because you know, they're a very small percentage of our nation who are performing in this manner. There are a lot of great Americans uh, volunteering and supporting our nation in many ways. But these young men and women are clearly our nation's finest and truly our, our most precious resource. So let's take care of these folks and get out there and make sure we're helping them. First of all, I'm honored to be able to serve and continue to serve in, in the role that I have right now. And there's nothing else in the world I could have thought of doing in retrospect with my life. 
Now, in terms of the life, it's a lifestyle. It's 24-7. I'm originally from the Scranton, PA area. I lived in the same house that I grew up in until I graduated from college. The military lifestyle, of course, is much different. I have three children. Uh, I have two children who, who are uh, uh, students at Texas A&M University in Texas and one who just started at the University of California, Davis. Each one of them has lived in many places throughout our world. And when you think about each one of these kids has probably moved on an average of over 10 times each in different places. We've lived in places that could range from three years to two years, sometimes one year, and we got to get up and go. I think that's uh, pretty standard within the active force. So what happens in that are the challenges associated uh, with, for the families, uh, not only from the normal moving, because you know with all these differences and these challenges of moving from one fortress to another, uh, from one country to another, what we end up having is the only solid, stable fact we have is the family. And the Army has recognized that. The, the, the uh, challenges associated with deployments even adds on to that stress for the family. But I gotta tell you, we're a resilient force. Our soldiers are resilient, our family members are resilient, and what helps them are the great uh, uh, capabilities that the Army's introduced, particularly within the last decade, in improvements in housing, improving in services for health and the well-being of our, our soldiers' families is remarkable. So a lot, of, a lot of turbulence in their lives, but a resilience and a lot of support through the military and what we're doing. Frankly, the, the entire military has gone in that direction. So that's the active duty side, but I, there's another piece of this too we have to talk about, and that's the reserve component, the reserve and national guards, and the challenges that they have too. Because you know, when they're called to active duty, um, the families, you know, we've got to make sure we're taking care of those families as well. And, and the challenges sometimes those soldiers have from coming back from a deployment with their occupations and getting back to work and, and, and you know, kudos to those uh, employers out there that are protecting those jobs for those soldiers uh, who are coming back from the fight, but taking care of those families too so they have the benefits, particularly while the soldiers are deployed and they're being looked after. So I think we're doing a great job. A lot can be done, uh, to, of course, to go forward in the future. So this is a lifestyle. It's not a job. It's 24-7, and it's a great way of life. Support your veteran. Hire your veteran. Learn what their challenges are, and work in the appropriate lanes to improve their plight. Because what they've done for our nation, the sacrifices they've made for our nation, place us in their debt, and I think we need to realize that and do everything we can to get out there and, and help our veterans. In supporting our veterans, I've mentioned earlier about hiring our veterans, hire your vet, hire your vet, that's very important. Uh, employers, those employers who have those positions for the veteran who's coming back from the fight, that's great, we, we thank you for that. Employers uh, who are considering hire vets, do so. Uh, for the folks out there, learn what's out there learn how you can take part in going through the appropriate lanes to support the plight of veterans so, so we can thank them for everything they've done, for the sacrifices that, that they've made for us that clearly put us in their debt. They're wonderful men and women and we owe it to them.